This is the Yammer GB2470 HSU. And despite Yammer being somewhat of a niche brand when it comes to gaming monitors, I got quite a few comments asking me to review this one. Turns out, your guy's interest in this monitor definitely was justified. I think this monitor will be really popular going forward. Yama provided the monitor for the purpose of this video. Of course, they don't get any input on this video's production, nor did they try to. Everything reflects my own and honest opinion. Now, GB2470 HSU is quite a mouthful. And to make things a little bit more complicated, there is also the G2470 HSU that's essentially the same monitor with a different, less adjustable stand. So this review applies to both, minus the part about the ergonomics, obviously. I'm gonna make my life a bit easier and refer to them both as just 2470. Now having a quick look at the most important specs, we have a 24 inch IPS panel here that comes with a 165Hz refresh rate. That's definitely nothing special anymore, but to me that combination is still the sweet spot when it comes to budget gaming monitors. And budget definitely is a key argument for the Yama. As of making this video, the GB version is around 190 euros and the less adjustable G version comes in at about 180 euros. Of course, I'll have international links to both versions in the video description. Depending on the current pricing in your region, it could be tempting to ditch the adjustable stand and go for the cheaper version instead. So let's check whether the adjustable stand is worth the extra cash. Well, it provides a wide range of height and tilt adjustment. And for coding or reading documents, it can also be rotated into portrait orientation. Swivel though is fixed, which shouldn't be a huge drawback for most users. But I'm not too stoked about how much space the stand takes up on the desk. It extends quite a bit to the front and to either side, considering this is a fairly small monitor. I didn't yet slam my mouse into the foot, but I can easily see that happen. So if you like to get your monitor really close and use a big mouse pad, you should definitely consider getting the cheaper non-B version instead and invest the price difference towards a different stand or mount. Now, apart from the stand taking a bit too much space, I quite like the overall aesthetics of this monitor. Its design is pretty clean and simple. No colored plastics and the logos are relatively unobtrusive. What I don't like though is that Yama chose to go with buttons for menu navigation instead of using a directional toggle. It's so easy to accidentally turn off the monitor when reaching for the menu button. If I would've gotten one subscriber for every time that happened to me, I would probably have overtaken Linus Tech Tips by now. I want to talk about audio for a bit. And that brings me to the integrated speakers of the 2470. Now, the bar for integrated speakers is already pretty low and these are bad even by those standards. Still better than having no speakers at all, but honestly not by much. But this isn't a speaker review, so let's move on to what matters the most. The display. And this monitor is bright. In a good and in a bad way. See, setting the brightness to 100 leads to about 350 nits, which is pretty bright for a monitor of this price class. On the downside, the brightness at the lowest setting is also pretty bright. In fact, 130 nits is the highest minimum brightness I've measured so far, which obviously is a bad thing for using the monitor in a dark environment. Well, some like to use their monitors at full brightness all the time, and if you're one of those maniacs, the high minimum brightness obviously isn't a problem, while for others this might be a huge counter argument. That bummer aside, I'm pleasantly surprised by the relatively high contrast of the 2470. I've measured a contrast ratio of 1379 to 1, which is a really solid result for an IPS panel. That's almost as high as the MSI G24-1 and the first generation AOC 24G2, which are still the highest contrast IPS monitors I've measured so far, both scratching on the 1500 to 1 mark. Now this might arouse the question whether the 2470 maybe uses the same panel as the AOC and MSI. Taking a look at some pursued photos with enabled backlight strobing clearly shows that both the AOC and MSI use red phosphor to create their vivid red colors. And the slow decay of this phosphor leaves those red artifacts that can be seen in both pictures on the right, but not with the Yama on the left. Or in short, no, it's using a different panel. And that's also confirmed by the factory menu. 
Judging by their names, those panel might be related though. So just like the MSI or AOC, this one has an IPS panel with a higher than usual contrast ratio. And I'm definitely pleased to see that more and more IPS panels surpassed the standard 1000 to 1 barrier. On top of that, my unit of the 2470 has a really good backlight uniformity. The exaggerated exposure shows a brighter spot at the top right corner, but overall this is a really good result. Here is the more expensive EX2510 for comparison and they are about equal. Now the backlight uniformity can of course vary between different units. That being said, I enjoy watching videos on the 2470. Dark scenes definitely benefit from the good contrast ratio, but I have to say I'm a bit annoyed that I can't turn the brightness down more. But I talked enough about that already, so let's move on and talk about color. Overall, the colors on the 2470 look about as saturated as they should be. And that is because the Yama pretty much is a standard gamut monitor. The negative of that is that Adobe RGB and DCI-P3 aren't covered enough to really work with them. But at least the important sRGB color space is 94% covered. Well, ideally, we'd of course like to see 100% of that covered, though as the overall gamut volume is roughly 100%, we at least get color saturation that looks about right. But let's dig a bit deeper. Out of the box, Yamaha brought the 2470 reasonably close to the desired D65 white point. The color temperature is spot on without changing any settings, but there's a small color tint preventing a better score here. To quickly sum up the other measurement results, it's mediocre. Though it's nice to see a good delta H result telling us that the color use are about correct. Building up on that with a few OSD tweaks, we can fix the white point and get the Yamaha to a decent spot. Performing a full calibration and profiling on top of that gives us very accurate results, which definitely would be good enough for professionals. But that's only true for the sRGB color space. These are the settings I recommend using and as usual the ICC profile is available from the video description. And while you're in the OSD, don't forget to turn on AMD FreeSync Premium under the Setup menu tab, which oddly enough is disabled by default. And don't let the naming distract you. If you have an Nvidia graphics card, you need to enable that setting too in order to activate G-Sync. And while you're there, you definitely want to turn off the unnecessarily bright white welcome screen. Your eyes will thank you when you're turning on your rig for a nighttime gaming session, but you forgot that you had the brightness set to full power. Now, as I just implied, the 2470 can be used with G-Sync as well, but it doesn't have the official NVIDIA G-Sync certification. Though I have to say in my testing with a 2070 Super, the Yama performed absolutely flawless. Not a single flicker or anything like that, even when using the ruler tool in Adobe Camera Raw, which usually unveils most flickering issues. Low framerate compensation starts at about 55 fps, works flawlessly and the transition is unnoticeably smooth. I personally use G-Sync a lot and I haven't noticed a single flaw gaming on the 2470. It's safe to say that I enjoy gaming on the Yammer and that can also be contributed to the good response times performance. As usual we'll use Blurbusters Pursuit camera technique to further analyze that. Now, Yama has an interesting approach to overdrive control. The default overdrive mode is labeled zero and in addition to that, they're providing two stronger modes and two weaker ones as well as overdrive off. I think having the default supposedly optimal mode labeled zero while still providing a decent adjustment range is a pretty neat idea. Well, unfortunately the default overdrive zero is already a bit too strong. Not to speak of the more extreme plus one and plus two modes. Getting rid of those two gives us a bit more room to look at the dark track as well. This is a good idea as the 2470 shows slightly more ghosting and darker transitions. Not as much as VA panels do, but a bit more than in the middle track. At 165Hz the best setting is minus one, while I would describe the default zero as borderline usable. Setting overdrive to minus one is still the best choice at 144Hz and therefore what I would recommend for adaptive sync gaming close to the maximum refresh rate. You could use minus one down to 120 hertz as well, but if 120 FPS and hertz is the highest you'll be getting, like if you're a console gamer for instance, minus two is the better choice. Minus two is also the go-to setting at 100 hertz, but for anything below that, overdrive should be turned off. 
Now that leaves us with three different overdrive settings instead of a single optimal set and forget option, which obviously would be much better. But let's check how the 2470 stacks up against its competition. Against the first version AOC 24G2, one of the most popular budget monitors, the 2470 does slightly better. It's subtle, but it manages to show the black lines inside the OFO's chassis a bit clearer. That's certainly helped by the fact that it runs at 165Hz, but this is also visible at 144Hz. Against the Mobius EX2510, the Yammer is slower, showing more ghosting, particular in the dark track. But the Mobius is one of the fastest of its class and more expensive, so that's forgivable. Now, Yama also implemented backlight strobing, here called Motion Blur Reduction or MBR for short. We got a bunch of different strengths to choose from, but anything below MBR plus 1 basically is worth enabling. MBR plus 2 is a good middle ground between brightness and clarity, as plus 3 doesn't become much clearer, but quite a bit darker. Generally, Yama's strobing implementation is alright, but falls short against BenQ's offerings. Not to mention that it blocks brightness control, which is just annoying. So the MBR mode definitely is not good enough that it should positively influence your buying decision, but it's worth giving a shot if you decide to get a 2470. So should you get one? Well, depending on availability and pricing in your region, this might be the cheapest of its class. And that's definitely a compelling argument for the 2470, especially as the good old AOC 24G2 seems to have gotten quite a bit more expensive everywhere. And this one in some way can be seen as a replacement for that. I'm talking about the first version of the 24G2 in particular. Just like the AOC, the Yammer also has a pretty high contrast ratio for an IPS and is a solid performer when it comes to gaming. The little refresh rate increase to 165Hz and having a usable strobing mode don't hurt either. Neither does the little improvement in response time performance. And even the adaptive sync performance is flawless without any flickering issues. So for gaming, the 2470 is a really solid choice. And I'm inclined to say that this is the new budget king, but I'm not really a fan of those bold statements and the 2470 definitely isn't without its quirks and drawbacks. For starters, the stand takes up a bit too much space on the desk. And my biggest complaint is the way too high minimum brightness. But other than that, Yama have built a really good budget monitor here and I think this will be really popular going forward. Thank you for watching and consider to subscribe.